Hey, I've got another integral on the board. This one's from MIT 2012. Problem number nine, we have the integral of one to 2011, square root of x over 2012 minus x plus square root of x dx. Okay, this looks pretty difficult, but what we can do here, this is a perfect scenario where we can use something called the King's Principle. So what I'll do, I've done a number of videos on this, so I can provide a link in the description. I have a quiz on it and an introduction video. But let's just see how this is going to work. So we're going to do a u substitution. And what I want to do for my u is we're going to add the bounds together. So 2011 plus 20, sorry, 2011 plus 1 is going to be 2012 minus x. From that, with just a little rearranging, we can say that x equals 2012 minus u. Let's get our dx value. So dx is going to be, that's 2012 is going to be 0. We're going to have a minus du. Then we'll make the substitution. First, updating our balance, we plug a 2011 in here. We're going to have a 1 up top, and then plugging a 1 in, we're going to have a 2011 over here, just flipping the balance, right? Then in the numerator for square root of x, we're going to have square root of 2012 minus u. 2012 minus, so 2012 minus x is u, so we're going to have a square root of u here, plus, and then this is going to be, this, this squared x is the same as this one, so we're just going to have 2012 minus u. Then I'm going to take this minus sign, we can bring this out front, okay, and we can use this to flip the balance. So what I can do is just, let's just do this right here, we'll rewrite this. So we'll flip this as 2011 to 1, getting it back with the greater value on top, we'll change that to a plus. Then for our next step, what we're going to want to do is, we usually, what we always do here is we want to get relate back to our original integral. You see we've got the same bounds. I can do a variable change now, because it's a definite integral. Okay, I can change the variable name to whatever I want. And so if I change this all back to x, better so that we can work with our original integral. So let's just see how this is going to work. Okay, now with the rewrite, I did change the order here. Okay, I flipped the 20, I put the 2012 minus x to the front, just to get flipped more like that. And then now we're set up perfectly. Now what we'll do is, our original integral, we'll just call this i so we can keep track of it. But all we've done is manipulate it all the way down to here. So this thing here is also i. Then at this point, what we can do is we can add this one and this one together. They're both the same thing, so we're just going to have two copies. We'll have 2i, okay? But this is why we got it back with the same bounds, the same variable name, x, so that we could then add these together. Okay, and with this rewrite, I kind of skipped a couple of steps. Now, because, so we had two integrals, but because we have the same variable, the same bounds, I was able to bring this into one integral. Because the denominator is the same in both integrals, we could just bring this together under the same denominator, adding our square root of x and the square root of 2012 minus x. And then we're set up perfectly because now we notice the order is reversed, but we've got the same thing in the numerator and the denominator. This will cancel and just give us a value of 1. So then integrating 1, super easy. That's why King's principle is so nice, is that it simplifies down to like 1. So we integrate and we get x, and we just have to evaluate it from... 2011 from sorry from 1 to 2011 this will just be 2011 minus 1 which equals 2010 we're not quite done though because we have two copies of the integral but we'll just divide by 2 divide by 2 and we get our final answer of 1005 that's it i think it was a fun problem today from mit 2012 thanks for watching please like and subscribe have a good day